Hey auto day enthusiasts, American automobile manufacturers are known for making luxury cars from the 1950s to the 1970s. One of the top brands is Chevrolet, and today we're going to talk about the Chevrolet Impala that carries a hefty price tag for classic car collectors. Is it worth the price? Let's find out more in today's episode. The Chevrolet Impala was a popular luxury car toward the end of the 1950s to the 1970s. At first, this car was a luxury version of the Chevrolet Bel Air. The Impala was Chevrolet's most expensive passenger car in 1965 and became one of the best-selling models at the time. This car competed with the Ford Galaxy 500 and the Plymouth Fury. The first Chevrolet Impala was in 1958, a coupe and a convertible. The second generation of the Chevrolet Impala from 1959 to 1960, the third generation of the Chevrolet Impala from 1961 to 1964, and the fourth generation Chevrolet Impala from 1965 to 1970. And the Chevrolet Impala, which we'll be looking at today, is the first generation owned by Laurent Setjononingat in 1958 at the Hockey Auto Gallery. I have some fun facts about Chevrolet for you guys. The first one is that Indonesian General Ahmad Yani enjoyed luxurious things during his lifetime. That's why he personally chose the Chevrolet Impala 1962 as his personal car during that time. Now, the second fun fact is that the Chevrolet Impala carried a hefty price tag during its time. In the 1960s, Indonesia experienced hyperinflation, but even then, a lot of people still wanted to buy and could buy the Impala. So what used to cost 5 million rupiah back then, nowadays maybe cost 500 million rupiah. Now, fun fact number three is that there's this car museum in San Diego in the United States. Now, there's a car shop called Cool Racing that modified a Chevy Impala 1958 and it became one of the world's best modified Impala. So it won a competition and it's right there in San Diego if you want to see it. Hi, I'm Lawrence Sherirat and I'm a classic car enthusiast. So since I was young, my dad have uh, influenced me to uh, start a hobby of liking uh, classic cars. So that's how I got the passion of uh, restoring, uh, collecting and learning how to dismantle and um, upgrade the cars, um, buy all the original parts. We focus on um, trying to restore back to the originals as how uh, we get it when, when we first bought it. Um, in total, there's about 60 cars and that has already been restored and there's another 30 cars that is still waiting in line to be restored. And one of the favorite actually is the Chevrolet uh, 1958 uh, Impala. This is one of the favorite as we always, we often use it for uh, tourings, rallies. It's one of the most reliable American cars that we have in a collection. So for this Impala, we restored the cars back in the 90s basically. Uh, if you look at the paint job, it's not perfect, but uh, that's the way it is. Uh, we always try to uh, fix the problems, I mean, restore the cars as, as, as uh, fit as possible as this is one of the, uh, I would say, uh, a very rare collection. Well, in Indonesia, yeah, I mean, in, in, maybe in the US, you can still find those, this kind of Impala, but this is a two-door uh, convertible and one of the first generation.
So Lawrence, how did you come up with the idea of Hawkes Gallery? Well, it started with the passion of my dad back in 1979 when he went to school in Australia. He worked as an intern in one of the workshop, I believe it was a Nissan workshop, uh, to learn about, about cars. So he got, he got excited with, with, with cars since then. And when he went back to Indonesia, he, looks, uh, he looked for, look out for uh, these classic cars that are being abandoned and buy them for cheap actually. And then uh, he has four, over 200 cars back then. So we started restoring one by one. And since then, we downsized the collection a bit. Now we have a total of 130 cars, roughly. Uh, but most of them is like a more collectible item, more uh, uh, rare ones compared to what we have before. So yeah, that's how we got it. Wow, really cool guys. Yeah. From 200, now still about 130 plus right. since 2008 mm -hmm. it's been here. Other than Antique Car Collection Garage, Hockey Gallery now also rents locations for photo shoots, B-weddings, or even video clips. The looks are classic and Instagrammable, perfect for those who want to savor the moment. Now I want to ask you, out of all the cars here that you've been able to obtain, mm -hmm. which one is the hardest to obtain or maybe kind of one that has a unique um, story? For the cars, they, most of it have a unique story, but one that has been a, a, a real a funny story where we actually, when we got the car, we have to uh, demolish one of the houses, small houses, because the car was actually surrounded by walls around it. So to get it out, we have to demolish the, the, the walls. And it was, I think, in, in Pontianak back then in 19, early 1990s, it is. And what was the car? It was a Chevrolet Bel Air 1957. Wow, Chevy Bel Air 1957 right. from Pontianak. They needed to demolish all the cars from around it. Yeah. I want to ask you, Lord, if somebody else has a classic car here, can they come here to maybe if you can help modify or restore it, or what's that? What's um, the deal at like? the moment, we don't have the capacity yet because we are still trying to restore all the car collection that we have. We have still 30 more that is not being handled yet, but. I wouldn't mind, I'm open to, to advice and, and, and inputs if, if uh, people need it. Nice, nice. So you guys, unfortunately, maybe can't do it here yet, but Lawrence is very happy to chat with you and help you out if you want asking questions. Right. At the Hockey Auto Gallery, 10 units of Chevrolet Impala are saved. But I'm amazed with Lawrence's first generation Chevrolet Impala with the blue paint. We'll look more about the Sultan's antique car. Stay on Auto Day. Like most American cars in the 1950s, the 1958 Chevrolet Impala has a quite long wheelbase of 3.25 meters. The total length of this car reaches 5.3 meters, and the Impala leaves a long overhead in the back. All right, guys, we're now standing in front of this 58 Impala, and I want to talk with Lauren about this. This looks really cool. Everything looks really cool from the front. Yep. Let's start with the headlamps first, right? So it seems they have two headlamps. Yes, that's really like the first few generations. They, they still use the double headlights. On, on the on the Impalas, the first generation. This is actually after uh, Chevy released uh, the uh, Bel Airs because after the, the 56, 55, and 57 Bel Airs, they switched the models to an Impala. And Lauren, not only the headlamps but also the turn signals. It seems right. also have kind of the double shape, double circles, right. very similar to the headlamps. Right, exactly. And then the bumpers, you see everything yep. is everything is in chrome. It's bling bling. Back in the 50s, everything is just the way it is. So this is the original, how it came? Right, right. We tried to restore all the cars in the yeah. collection, especially the Impalas, back to the original. This is really cool. So the bumper is original. What about the grill here? The grill as well. This is all original? Yes. And the original kind of coloring that it came right. with was supposed to come Right, exactly. It's really cool, man. There's one more thing I think about this Impala that makes it really simple, is that I think, look at this logo, right? Back from the 1950s logo, as well as the V-shape. Let's talk more about that. Actually, the V-shape is indicates that the engine that the, 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 the Impala has, this is a 350 um, V8 small block engine, 
that's how the V came along. I see. And then also the logo. This is from the 50s logo. I think right. nowadays maybe the Chevy has a different logo. Yes, they it's... keep updating the logos actually. Yeah, it's just this kind of blue card nowadays. Right, exactly. Nice, nice. But overall, again, it gives it a good, simple look from the front. Very classic 1950s type car. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, nowadays the Chevy logo is just this blue logo right here that we see that logo on the cars nowadays. But back in the 1950s, it was this whole big thing. Now I'm really curious to see what's under this hood. Let's open it up, Lauren. Wow, can you guys see this? It's really cool. So I want to talk about the engine. How many horsepower cc's is this? This is actually a 5,700 cc's uh, small block, uh, 350 uh, uh, cubic inch engine. Uh, this one is actually have been replaced in the early 2000s. Uh, we bought a new uh, turnkey engine, including the transmission. So it's already been uh, dyno tuned and everything. So we just plug and play, turnkey, and then we just go. But so this engine basically is been has been used since the 1950s all the way to the, till the 70s. Not only specifically to the Impalas, but to other cars as well. But all the GMs use the same engine. Wow, the nice. most reliable ones. 5,700 cc's. Right. That's crazy. That's so much power. Yes. With the 350 small block engine capacity of 5,700 cc's. It's natural if Chevy Impala's vehicle sounds very awesome, guys. Nowadays, you can even have a smaller CC, but the manufacturer is using turbo technology or supercharged to get large amounts of power. What about finding spare parts for a car made in the 50s? Is that kind of hard nowadays in like 2022? Um, not really, actually. I mean, everything you can get it online. Like, all this is readily available, and actually manufacturers still manufacture them. So it's easy to find, nice. especially the American cars, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Really cool. I can't wait to take it for test drive in a bit. Close it up. Let's go. All right, guys, we're now on the side of this beautiful Chevy Impala. And first off, Lauren, I want to talk about the side holding here. Everything looks really beautiful. Long lines from the back to the front of this car, and it's in chrome. Let's talk more about that. Right, uh, that's actually the most important uh, accent of the cars. Like when we got the cars, we make sure that we have a complete set of these uh, chrome pieces. Yep. Well, we re of course we re chrome everything, but it's quite hard to find actually. And then especially the uh, the logos with the uh, the flags, the racing flags, those are hard to find. Right so is this these. original or did you add? This is original actually. This is original, yes. but again, it's we hard try, to find. We, and we restore it basically. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then same with these accents as well. Right. Starting from the bottom of the door all the yes. way to the side of the door. And these, I don't know, what is this called? Like racing stripes? Uh, probably they're trying to imitate a, a racing a racing element, put, putting in racing elements in the car as well. Because Impala has been famous for, for uh, a muscle car. So yeah, so even from the side of this car, the vibes that we get, this is a very American muscle car, 5,700 cc's. You can see the logo of the Impala here, race flags and kind of air or racing stripes here that makes this car wants to go fast at high speeds. Now to go at high speeds, we also need to talk about the tires of this. Yes. So what's the tires on this thing? Uh, it's a regular tire, but we use a, a aftermarket um, alum, all aluminum um, wheels that, that actually goes along with the, air, the era, the same era. So uh, it's, it's quite cool. It's a billet uh, aluminum uh, wheels. How big are the rims? Uh, I believe it's just 15. 15 inch. 15 inch. Nice, nice. Now that we've talked about this from the side of the car, let's go talk about the Chevy Impala from the back. Let's first talk about this logo, Lawrence, again. So on the back here, it doesn't have kind of the Impala logo or the right. racing flags. Yes. But it only has kind of the Chevrolet cursive and yeah. the V that you mentioned symbolizes mm -hmm. the? The V8 engine. The V8 engine. Right. Has a big baggage space and I see this thing here. It's a hidden, so basically back in the 50s, um, manufacturers tried to hide their gas tanks from plain sight, so they try to put it somewhere hidden. This is one of the coolest thing. Hidden like gas tank. It's really cool. Nice, so we have the hidden gas tank here. And then if we follow this, it seems like we have the fins of the car. Right, the fin tails. Back then it was popular as well. Manufacturers put on a, a, a lot of fin tails 
like um, on the sides and on the, on the rear. And then especially uh, to identify an Impala from um, from, from uh, other Chevrolet because yes. the other Chevrolet like the Biscayne they use the same the same body styles and everything but they had rear headlights. There's three of them. Yep. And Biscayne have two of them. Ah, so there you go. So Chevy has three rear headlights. Biscayne yes. has two. The 1950s became one of the car ages with the concept of space. That can be seen from the various shapes of the strength, side body, to the lights that are made to look like a spaceship. Very unique, yeah? And then again, more or less, the bumper is still the same from the front. Right. Kind of a chrome, yes. nice. Everything is chrome, chrome, um, 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 touch. Chrome right. touch, nice. And then I'm looking back here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Since I had double exhaust, is that correct? Right, because of the V8, V8 engine, of course. You need, need the double exhaust. exhaust. Right. And uh, we can talk about the uh, uh, suspension as well. Yeah, because this is a big, long car, right? Right. You, like, when you ride this car, you're feeling like driving a, a, riding on a yacht, you know? With yeah. Basically, with uh, a long wheelbase. It's one of the most uh, uh, comfortable cars to ride in. Nice, nice. Well, I can't wait to get in into guys. Let's go talk about it from the inside. All right guys, now that we're opening up the hood, this is really cool for a car from the 1950s to be able to convert like that automatically without any manual human intervention. Alright guys, we're now inside this 1958 Chevy Impala and everything is great, right? But we just saw Lauren close the convertible and make, close the rooftop and make it a convertible. Mm -hmm. And now when you're sitting in the driver's seat, what your eyes are drawn to is the dashboard right away, right? This dashboard is blue, very smooth, mm -hmm. a very 1950s look, again with the chrome here. Right. Is everything original or did you modify anything here um, in the dashboard? Most of the uh, uh, instrument clusters is all original, but we added a water temperature, uh, temperature gauge um, on top of what we have on the, on the instrument cluster, so have, we have a more accurate water temperature readings. Yeah, so you added the water gauge, and then looking at the speedometer here, it seems like it's also still a very simple look. Right. We have kind of the speed here, which my understanding you said is miles, yeah? Miles, yeah. Originally really? it's miles. Very unique, because again, everything in the United States is miles. In right. Asia, it's kilometers. So this is miles, the speed. Mm -hmm. You have the temperature of the engine. You have how many the auto motor, auto meter trip. And it's in miles, right? In miles. Well, the autometer is also in miles in terms of how far you've gone, right. as well as the fuel tank here. Mm -hmm. So this is really cool. And again, the only thing you added was this water gauge here. Yep. And why did you add the water gauge? When? Why? Why? Well, to, to get a more accurate reading of the uh, water temperature of the radiator. So we made sure that we didn't get overheat you know, because of the, 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 the big engine. We also added a, a blower motor, like a fan, extra fan motor in the, in the front to help to, to, cool, to it down. cool it down. And then looking here at the steering wheel, this is the original steering wheel? Exactly, yeah. Very big, very thin. It has the classic Impala and the racing flags right. on this here. Right. Why did you decide to keep the original steering wheel instead of replace it? Like, I know well, some other people kind of replace the classic cars with the more steering uh, wheel. If we have the original, why not? Why not? That's a good point, yeah. And again, trying to keep it as much as possible original. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the steering wheel, as you guys can see, we're on the left-hand side, like in the United States. Right, the That's original. Really we try to, basically when we collect the, the cars, or we buy the cars, we try to get it from the origin, uh, uh, with the uh, steering of the original um, country where it's manufactured. So from the steering wheel here, let's talk about the transmission here. Yes, yeah, so a three-speed um, automatic transmission, a very nice 
luxury uh, for back in the 50s. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can drive uh, automatic cars. And you can see the gear here where it's in uh, Part yep. B, N, D, all that here. Yes, the selector, gear selector stuff. Nice. And this transmission is still smooth? Yep. Nice. Still very smooth. So from the